Hey, this is Devin from Visions again, and today we're gonna to talk about how to build and rebuild your credit. And we already covered why credit scores are so important in another video. Of course, it covers everything from can you get a loan or not to what your interest rates are gonna be, but also other stuff like can you secure a job? What are your insurance rates gonna be? So today we're gonna to start with the basics and go from how to start your credit from scratch, ways that you can build your credit, and also ways to improve your score in case you've fallen a little behind. If there's one thing to know about building your credit score, it's that it takes time. 15% of your credit score is based on your length of credit. So you can't just start off with one credit card and six months later think you're gonna get a mortgage, but you have taken your first step and that's important. So as you start to build your credit, you should really ask yourself four questions. Number one, what can you afford? Number two, do you need a cosigner? Three, the product. Are you gonna go for an open-end loan or a closed-end loan? And number four, are you gonna go for a secured or unsecured loan? Now, number one is really important because you need to make sure that you can actually make your payments, not just in full, but also on time. So if $100 a month is a little too expensive for you, maybe take a smaller loan out so that you're more in that $25 to $50 a month range. You wanna start slow, you wanna take your time, and you wanna do it at a pace and price that works for you. Secondly, do you need a cosigner? And what is a cosigner? Well, cosigner is someone who takes equal responsibility for your loan. Typically, what you want to look for in a cosigner is someone with a solid credit history of their own, because a financial institution will look at both of your incomes, both of your credit scores, and then decide whether to approve or not based on both of your information. So it helps to have a strong credit applicant, someone with a good score of their own, uh, someone that you trust and know, of course, so a parent, a grandparent, Someone like that, someone who you know will have your back, God forbid if you can't make your payments. Next, open-end or closed-end credit. Is a personal loan right for you? Is a credit card right for you? What's best as you move forward? And remember that it's good to have a mix if you can afford both. And finally, are you gonna go for an unsecured loan, the traditional way, or are you gonna go for a secured loan, which is a little bit different? So let's talk about secured loans. Secured loans are tied to something called collateral, which it's basically just something of value that your institution can co-own as security that if they're not paid back for their loan, they have something that they can take. So for an example, take a car loan. Your car is the collateral for that loan. So if you don't make your payments, they can take your car, which isn't great, but that gives them reassurance that if you can't pay the debt, they're covered for their expense. Secured loans don't have to be tied to just cars or homes though. They can also be tied to money. And that's where secured credit cards and credit builder loans come in. So a lot of people when they're starting out building their credit go for something called a secured credit card. Now, as we discussed, secured loan is something tied to value. In this case, it's money that you put forth yourself that's then tied to your credit limit. So let's say you have $500 in your savings account and you don't need to spend it you can volunteer that $500 to your financial institution to secure a credit card in that value. So for example, that $500 in your savings account becomes a $500 credit limit. The $500 remains in your account, but it's on hold, a voluntary hold, meaning you can't access it. So what this means for your financial institution is that you're free to use a credit card, but if you can't make your payments for one reason or another, they have that $500 to fall back on. So secured credit cards are a really nice way to start building credit if you don't have a solid history of your own. So once you've successfully made your payments after like a year or two, you might be able to reapply, remove that $500 off of hold and turn your secured credit card into a regular credit card. So secured credit cards are great for open-end credit and if you have money up front, but not everyone has $500 or more that they can put on hold for a secured credit card. And that's where a credit builder loan can come in. So with a credit builder, the financial institution gives you money up front, but that money is on hold until you make payments on it. So the part of your payment that goes to the principal rather than the interest is then released in your account and yours to use. But what's principal and interest anyway? So all payments are actually based on two parts, your principal and your interest. The principal is how much money you actually take out. So say you take out an $80,000 mortgage that $80,000, that value of your home is your principal. But every time that you make your monthly payment, part of it is going to go to the principal and part of it is gonna to go to the interest. And the interest is what your financial institution charges you to borrow that money. So say if your mortgage payment is $800 a month, but you owe $100 on interest, 
$700 is gonna to go toward your actual mortgage balance, $100 is gonna to go to your institution. So now that we understand what principal and interest are, let's reapply that to the credit builder example. So if you have, say, a credit builder loan for 1,200 bucks over the course of two years, your monthly payment's probably gonna be around $50. As you make that payment, let's say $45 goes to the principal and $5 goes to your interest. The credit builder loan, what that means is that $45 that you've paid toward the interest is released from the hold on your account. So it's yours to use. So you do still have all the money there, but it's a safe, secure way for you to start building credit and earn some pocket change on the side. So you've gotten yourself your secured credit card. You've gotten yourself a credit pillar, maybe both. So what now? How can you keep that momentum going and build yourself a good score? Well, the first things first, make your payments. Make them on time, make them early, or even set them up automatically. Your payment history makes up 35% of your total credit score, and one missed payment will stay on your report for 24 months. So pay attention to what you have. Don't take out more than you can afford. And on that note, use your credit card responsibly if you have one. Uh, try to keep your limits in check, because your capacity is also about a third of your credit score. So if you have that $500 credit card and you're putting $500 on it every month, your credit score is going to be lower than if you just put like $100 or $200 on it per month. The lower you keep your balance relative to your limit, the higher your credit score is going to be. And finally, don't shop around for credit too often because every hard inquiry that you take is going to lower your credit score. So we talked about building your credit, but what if you already have a credit score and you're just not happy with it? Well, the first thing you should do is pull up a copy of your credit report, which you can do once per year for free by going to annualcreditreport.com. Now, once you have your report, go through each item line by line and look for missed payments, look for collections accounts, and then reach out to that financial institution and see what you can do about it. A lot of institutions will allow you to go onto a payment plan because ultimately they want to make sure that you succeed and that they get paid back. And while you're making these payments, try not to take on any additional debts because if you're already having trouble making ends meet, the last thing you need to do is add an additional expense to that list. And if you're really struggling, contact your institution about credit counseling. Chances are they have either a free or discount service and you're better off going directly through them than going through a th third party service. So I'm Devin from Visions Federal Credit Union and I hope that you learned something today about building and repairing your credit. Uh, I encourage you to like and subscribe to the video series if you like them. We have a lot of great content out there on YouTube and I'll catch you next time with some more financial tips.